G'day everyone, this is Matthew Scudder from SkySight and we're here today to talk about the IGC upload feature. Now I'm doing this video in response to a user request, uh, so if you have any more topics you'd like to have a video on or explanation on, uh, please do write into us. So the IGC upload feature is my favorite feature personally because since I've added it I get significantly less complaints the weather's wrong and uh, I think that's because users are now able to upload their flights and they can see where they actually flew versus where they thought they were going to fly and see that perhaps the weather was better in um, a different area to where they thought they were going. So let's give it a try. So first we need to have an IGC file. So I'm going to go onto the OLC. I've just picked out one of the flights from Seminole Lake yesterday. I think they've got the Nationals there at the moment. We click IGC to download the file. And we have the file downloaded. And now we go back across to SkySight. IGC upload, click on upload, there's the IGC file. Now what it's going to do is automatically change the date, so it's going to go back to the 18th of March, which is the date of this flight, and we've got to move ourselves to where the flight actually was, which is down in Florida, and we can see it's colored the flight according to the hydrothermals parameter, so if you're looking at the hydrothermals chart when you upload the flight, it'll color it according to that. If you are instead looking at a wave forecast, it'll color it according to the vertical velocity. And you can see just on the time slider here, it's constrained the ranges of times. So Jim launched about one o'clock. That's in UTC time here on the OLC. That's about one o'clock in local time in the East United States and flew till about five o'clock. And you can see as we move the time slider around this flight, this little marker appears on the map for the time of day there. So we can actually see if we click play here, it's going to move the little marker around the map. The forecast will update underneath. And we can see it move around. Um, so it is only approximate with the times here. It's only going to the nearest half hour rather than the nearest minute or anything like that because that's we're only forecasting for every half hour. But it gives you a pretty good idea of whether the forecast was accurate, whether it was good where you thought it was, <coughs> or better somewhere else. Now, of course, it's showing you the heights that you flew, which isn't necessarily the top of thermals. Um, but we can see on this occasion it looks like Jim got a little bit low up in this area here, getting down to 900 meters perhaps. Um, but down here, it looks like he was doing much better. And then we can see, I think this will be his final glide back to Seminole. Um, so not a particularly interesting flight over the top of the forecast to look. It looks like it was a fairly homogenous area he was flying in. No big deviations from what was forecast. Um, what's much more interesting to me, at least, is to have a look at the wave forecasts in comparison. So if we go to a wave chart and go to Europe, because I saw there's some nice wave flights in Europe recently. So this pilot here I found on the OLC had a really nice flight in the wave the other day, up around 4,000 meters flying around the south of France. Let's download his trace. And we can now upload his trace. Let's go to the south of France. So we've selected a wave chart because we want it colored by the wave rather than by his altitude. <coughs> and we can now see his flight there. So interestingly, it looks like he was flying very much where the wave was forecast. So we can see this long wave bar here. And we can see the color coding according to his sync rate. So if he's choosing to cruise through lift um, at a speed that means he isn't climbing, it means we're going to see it colored according to his actual sync rate rather than his netto or anything like that. And um, we're not intending to be a fully fledged flight analysis solution here, which is why we don't have things like um, smoothing between half hour to half hour or anything like that. It's just meant to be for the purposes of reviewing was the forecast accurate in the area you were flying. Um, so we can zoom right in and see he was going through here about four o'clock I think and see what it was saying. 
So we can see the forecast said he was going to have some really strong lift here. And you can see just as he comes into this area almost exactly, we see the lift go really, really strong up five, six knots. And he does a couple of circles there, figure eights, and then he moves on again. And we can see throughout the rest of his flight, him following this line here, and you can see that he's just cruising along. Uh, we don't know how fast he's going, um, but he's just cruising along in zero sync there. So probably he's decided to just cruise at 60, 70 knots or something through the weak lift there and keep going straight and level. We can also see when he went through this area here, so he went through here about 2.30. And once again, we can see really strong lift in this area here, up around three, four meters a second. But it looks like it might've been a little bit stronger if he'd been a little bit further upwind. And we can also see his long final glide back home again. We can see it wasn't so great through here. Little bits of lift and sink in between, but not much. We can have a look at where he took off from see how he climbed away so probably he climbed away from quite low here so about two o'clock and we'll have a look at the wave charts a little bit lower maybe two kilometers and see if we can see what he was climbing in there so we can see it thinks there was a weak lift there but not great and it doesn't look like he had a great climb but he did climb away eventually the forecast at least thinks it was going to be a little bit stronger here but he could well be flying in a really small scale phenomenon here that's just smaller detail than the model is able to pick up so that's it we've talked about how to upload your flights and compare them on a wave forecast and on a thermal forecast please write in if there's anything else you'd like to talk about